वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑफ मैकेनिक्स ऑफ फ्लूड माई सेल्फ संजय मनल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर राजी स्कूल ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो इन दिस क्लास वी विल अंडरस्टैंड सम इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक कंटिन्यूम कॉन्सेप्ट वील अंडरस्टैंड वट आर द डिफरेंट फ्लूड प्रॉपर्टीज एक्सपेशली विस्कोसिटी हाउ इट इज important how it has been influencing the fluid motion and different types of fluids based on viscosity we'll learn this one in detail okay first we'll start from continuum concept we know that matter consists of number of atoms and the property of a system will be defined or the matter will be or the behavior of a matter will be defined based on the activities happening at the atomic level so the atomic level activities for a bulk substance if you take and if you take a small region there the action will be different from that of if you take another region because there exist discontinuity because there exist discontinuity and the activities happening at atomic level is entirely different but if you are taking the system the system which we take into consideration if the length scale of that system is very much higher than that of mean free path then the atomic level induction or in other words micro scale activities can be neglected and we can assume the substance is continuous in nature and the property remains the same throughout Actually, we will define with the help of a number called as Nuts Nutson number. It's a ratio between mean free path and the dimension of the system. So, if the value of, of mean free path is very much less compared to the actual length scale, we can define. We can assume the system to be in continuum. Most of the practical applications are coming under continuum concept. So, we'll. take this continuum concept throughout our course so we are taking systems with length scale very high we are not taking any system with smaller length scale and evaluating it we are studying mostly we are studying all the practical applications where the system is very much higher than that of the length scale of the system is very much higher than that of the mean free path assumptions to continuum concepts comes when the length scale that you take into consideration is very small that is it is, it is in the microscopic range then uh, the individual atomic activities has to be taken into consideration some of the example or the theory some of the theories that is been used is rarefied gas theory are some of the examples now this happens we will accept continuum assumption when pressure tends to zero for a small volume or just the reverse if volume tends to zero for at a particular pressure then we can we cannot take continuum concept there the properties will be depending upon how individual molecules behave so there discontinuity exist so you know to define that the plot the density with respect to the size of control volume we can see in which case we can take continuum assumption and which case continuum assumption is neglected or we uh, we have to consider the discontinuity of the system so in order to define that we are using a number called as nutson number which is ratio between uh, the mean free path mean free path lambda of the molecule and l which is a characteristic length dimension of the system if characteristic length dimension is very high compared to mean free path which we have take, pre, uh, taken previously we will be taking into consideration the continuum assumption but if it is comparable with uh, characteristic dimension then we have to take the discontinuity into consideration so here if lambda by l that is if the nutson number is lesser than that of 0.01 then we can take continuum assumption but if the value is between 0.01 to 
then we will be assuming that one as slip flow and the next one 0 0.1 to 0 0.01 if i am taking the nuts and number between that then we will be we have to take transition flow and if it is greater than 10 we have to take free molecular flow there the molecular properties to be taken in greater extent so for our condition we are taking continuum assumption for our course we are taking continuum assumption okay now next we will just refresh what we have learned in the junior classes what is a system what is a surrounding system is a region where we are doing our observation and uh, anything other than system is called as surroundings uh, between system and surrounding there can both exist matter exchange as well as energy exchange depending upon the way in which exchange happens we can define that one as open system closed system and isolated system then it's the system itself can be taken into two different cases it can be control volume system which has been shown at the bottom part a control volume with it can be of real Im real boundary or it can be of imaginary boundary or we have we can take control mass system where the mass of the system remain the same even if the volume varies even if the volume varies which is be shown at the top okay now based on this we will be defining different properties of the system and for fluid system also we will do the same we can assume fluid system usually will be taking control volume system we will take control volume approach where the volume is assumed to be fixed there can be a mass flow coming in and going out for our reasoners a control volume system approach is been taken for fluid mechanics okay now any characteristic which is used to describe a system is called as properties and this properties can be of two different types intensive and extensive in nature if you are taking intensive property it is independent of the mass and if you take extensive property it is dependent on mass if you take a system whose values of mass volume temperature pressure and density b m v t p and rho and if you take the same system and divide into half you can see the mass will become 0.5 times m volume will become 0.5 times v but temperature remain the same for individual systems pressure remain the same for individual system and density remain the same for individual systems from here you can understand m and v the mass and volume are examples of extensive property whereas temperature pressure and density are extensive property because it doesn't vary the intensity property doesn't vary with respect to how much time you slice the system still the intensity property value remains the same but extensive property depends upon the mass of the system next we will be learning different fluid properties first we will be taking into consideration basic properties of fluid which can be defined as characteristics of a continuous fluid which are independent on fluid motion okay so first basic property of a fluid comes is density as you already know density is the ratio between mass and volume so the unit the si unit of density is kilogram per meter cube the density of water is 100 kilogram per meter cube and density of air is 1.24 kilogram per meter cube density of mercury is more than that of water which is 13600 kilogram per meter cube now once we know density just reverse of that one is the next important property called as specific volume specific volume is the ratio between volume per unit mass volume per unit mass is defined as specific volume which is actually the inverse of the density so here we will be defining the unit of the uh, specific volume is meter cube per kilogram next when you take into consideration fluids okay we will be having another terminology called as specific weight 
the uh, specific weight is the ratio between weight to volume weight to volume ratio is specific weight so the unit the si unit of specific weight is newton per meter cube now here if you take density if you take density and specific weight what would be the difference what would be the difference between spe specific weight and density in the case of specific weight it is ratio between weight and volume in the case of density is the ratio between mass and volume so if you relate between density and specific weight its specific weight will be equal to density into 9.81 meter per second square that is the acceleration due to gravity so that's why the specific weight of water since the density of water is 1000 newton per meter cube the specific weight of water will be 9810 newton per meter cube and for air it will be 12.07 newton per meter cube now when you relate is when you compare two different liquids or fluids it's we usually define it based on another terminology which is called as specific gravity this is actually the ratio between density of a substance to the density of a standard standard fluid okay so it will be this the, the, the standard fluid will be at a particular temperature in the case of liquids it is taken as water at 20 degrees celsius and uh, the density of water at 20 degrees celsius and similarly for uh, gaseous form it is uh, the specific uh, density of air is been taken as the standard substance so the specific gravity is the ratio between specific if you take the case of liquids it is the ratio between specific weight of liquid divided by specific weight of water but if you take the gaseous form it will be the ratio between specific weight of gas divided by specific weight of air so previously we have learned what is the value of gravity uh, density for water as well as for mercury so from there we can get the specific weight sorry specific gravity of water will be equal to 1 and specific gravity of mercury it will be 13.6 this specific gravity is useful when you go for analysis of fluid proper different fluid properties when you come to the next phase when we study how to measure the pressure at different point with the help of manometer we will be utilizing this terminology called as specific gravity so right now we have studied some terminology some of them are gravity uh, density specific uh, volume then specific weight and then we have studied specific gravity say i am asking you Say I assume that I am taking two different fluids of two different densities which are immiscible. Then if I am taking the case of oil and water, if I am drop, uh, pouring oil and if I am taking water, say I assume that the density of oil is much more higher than that of water. In such case what, will, what would happen? The liquid which is having more density will be going down and one which is go, having lesser density will be moving up. Okay, that's what happens. So from there, okay, if I'm taking two different liquids, water and silicon oil, two different liquids, which is of almost the same density, thousand kilogram per meter cube for water, and uh, for oil it is 970. The silicon oil it is 970 kilogram per meter cube. The density is almost the same, but here you can see the way in which water flows and silicon oil flows is entirely different can you tell me what may be the reason behind it you can see the silicon oil is being uh, poured into a beaker it's much more slower in the previous phase it, uh, i have shown you the, the water is being poured into the same beaker but the flow rate was uh, the, the flow rate obtained for water was much more higher compared to silicon oil can you tell me what would be the reason here you can see the densities are almost the same it's not due to the density difference can you tell me what would be the reasons behind it yes we'll explain it based on a new phenomena okay so for that uh, first of all i am taking instead of fluid i am taking the case of two solids
taking two solids A and B. Assuming two solids A and B on let A be a stationary condition and B be moving with the help of due to, under the ap application of a force F, let B will be moving forward. Okay, when it is moving forward, what happens? When two solid bodies come in contact, there will be always friction between the at the contact surface. Similarly, for fluid also it happens. It may be when you compare with solid and fluid, or there also the resistance of law occurs. There will be a resistance force existing. Similarly, if you take two different fluid layers, okay, there also you will be having this restricting force, this resistance. This resistance for if you take the case of water and silk cord. In the first case, in which case you can say which in which case you will be having more resistance? Is it in the case of water or is it in the case of silicon oil? Yes, it's in the case of silicon oil. The resistance if you take resistance if you take if you take a if you uh, move hand through water and if you move hand through oil, at which condition you will be having more resistance? You can say you can see that the more resistance will be available in the case of oil when you move your hands through the oil you will be feeling more resistance so this will be actually acting as a property this property that represents the internal resistance of this fluid is called as viscosity we'll go in detail what is viscosity and how will be different Now the viscosity, viscosity, uh, the way in which viscosity is being explained is based on Newton's law of viscosity, which is obtained by an experiment study by Sir Isaac Newton. So in his experiment study, what we, what he done is he taken a stationary plate and in above that, in, in he, he he have taken two different plates. In between that, you will be having fluid layers, which moves. Now, is free, which is free to move. Now uh, he kept one of the plate to be stationary in nature and the second one he gave a force F on that one so due to that the plate moves with a velocity u max okay and here the velocity of the uh, plate will be zero so that's why the fluid layer adjacent to this one is having a velocity equal to zero which is called as no slip condition okay that is the uh, velocity of the stationary plate and the layer adjacent to the the fluid layer adjacent to the plate will be having the same speed so that is called as no slip condition similar to that the speed of this corresponding upper plate the upper moving plate and the layer of fluid ju just adjacent to this one will be having the same speed since it is assumed to be no slip condition so in such condition you can see the speed varies as you move up from the stationary plate to the moving plate so when that happens in that condition he he observed that the force f is directly proportional to the area the area he chose if it is more then the force required will be more as you already know as the area increases the resistance that will taking taking up will be also higher now the velocity v it will be directly proportional to velocity v that is the speed at which it is me moving okay then it is inversely proportional to the length the resistance is inversely proportional to the length that is the distance between the two plates if the distance between the two plates is less then you will be having more resistance if the distance between the plates is less so higher you will be having less resistance so from here from there he he found out that the force is directly proportional to area of the plate velocity of the fluid and L will be the distance between the plates. Now as you already know here the force is acting tangential to the tangential to the surface A. The force is acting tangential to the surface A. So that's why here we can assume this one as a tangential force. The ratio of tangential force to area or the tangential the force divided by the area is defined as the shear stress so it, you can define f by a that is if i am taking this one if i am equating this if i am taking a to this side f by a you can define as tau and this v by l v by l v is the velocity and l will be the 
distance between them. So here you can see the variation of the velocity with respect to the distance. Here you can see here it is increasing in a linear manner. The increase of the velocity will be in linear manner. So that's why you can define V by L. That is a velocity at extreme divided by the distance between the plates is directly will be equal to the slope of this graph between the distance x along x direction and the velocity distance along the y direction and the velocity it will be the ratio between it will be the slope it will be acting as the slope of this corresponding plot between the velocity and y so from there we can define v by l you can define does du by dy where u defines the velocity and y defines the distance between the plates so if you are taking that you will get tau will be directly proportional to dou u by dou y now in order to avoid this proportionality we will be introducing a constant called as mu which is called as coefficient of viscosity which acts as a property of the fluid now here you can see the shear stress will be more at which condition when i am taking the two different fluids two different fluids which is under the same condition here mu will be equal to mu into dou u by dou y so if you take dou u by dou y let it be the same in which condition you will be having more shear stress acting in the case where you will be having more mu value so more resistance will be obtained for that condition so more resistance means the value of mu will be also higher so this mu value is called as coefficient of viscosity or it is also named as dynamic viscosity or absolute viscosity which acts as a property of a fluid okay now the unit the si unit of dynamic viscosity is newton second per meter square or pascal second in cgs system it is called as poise now the poise and pascal second is been coming in ratio as one poise will be equal to 0.1 pascal second and the viscosity of water at 20 degree will be 1 centi poise okay so as i already explained viscosity can be defined from newton's law viscosity which is mu will mu will be the shear stress will be equal to mu into dou u by dou y where mu is the coefficient of viscosity or dynamic viscosity so we will be explaining it in detail the same we will just explain it once again if I, in the newton's experiment he had taken a lower plate which is stationary and he had taken an upper plate which is moving with a velocity v and when it moves the velocity of fluid adjacent to the lower plate will be having zero and the velocity of fluid adjacent to the top plate will be having velocity v and the distance between if i am assuming the distance between the plates let it be l and if i am taking the condition which i already explained that is a fluid particle which is adjacent to the lower plate will be having the same velocity at as that of the plate so that condition is called as no slip condition so since the velocity of bottom plate is zero the velocity of fluid particle adjacent to that will be having the velocity zero similarly the velocity of fluid particle adjacent to the top plate will be having velocity v okay now the variation of velocity is being shown in this diagram along the y direction the velocity variation is being shown so which is linear in nature so the slope of this one slope of this one you can find it like this okay the inverse of the slope will be coming like this du by dy which is equal to v by l since the profile is linear in nature you can define du by dy will be equal to v okay here we will be taking two different plates bottom plate and top plate which is kept at a distance l and we are taking a fluid film l m n o when the upper plate is given a force f it will be deformed to form l m n dash o dash 
so the position of n and o will be changing to a new location if i am taking just the location or new location of n let this be the initial condition and after a time t after the deformation the location of n let it be here named as n dash so the distance traveled by the fluid particle at point n is taken as da then it will be equal to velocity into the time taken so that is da will be equal to v into dt if i am taking it like this and the angle subtended by n and n dash with respect to m is taken as d beta this d beta will be your shear strain this will be your shear strain in the case of solid mechanics we have learned how we will be defining shear strain when it is been applied by a shear force okay similar to that the angle subtended by the initial location and the final location after deformation the angle subtended between them is taken as the shear strain so here also d beta will be acting as the shear strain now what is tan beta here tan beta will be equal to v into dt or da divided by l so that's why we can define that one as tan b tan d, d beta if the d beta is very small we can define tan d beta will be is approximately equal to d beta which is equal to da divided by dl which is equal to v into dt divided by l or we can write db d beta divided by dt will be equal to v by l we have already defined v by l is equal to du by dy by defining the velocity profile we have defined d beta v by l will be equal to du by dy or in other words we can say d beta by dt will be equal to du by dy now in the previous case in the case of newton's experiment we defined shear stress will be equal to nu into du by dy so from the new relation we can define that one is equal to mu into d beta divided by dt what is d beta divided by dt d beta is what shear strain so d beta divided by dt will be equal to rate of shear strain so from here newton's law of viscosity defines the shear stress is proportional to rate of shear strain in the fluid it's entirely different from that of solids in the case of solids according to hooke's law shear stress is directly proportional to shear strain but here for fluids according to newton's law of viscosity shear stress is proportional to rate of shear strain so from here you can understand the difference between the previous the difference between both in the previous example first case water was free to flow in the second case the silicon oil was not that much free to flow the reason behind that one is the density of water is 100 kg per meter cube the flow we can see the flow and the density of that one is the silicon oil is 9700 kg per meter cube but the flow is different from the previous one the reason behind that one is the viscosity mu value the dynamic viscosity value is 8.90 into 10 raised to minus 4 pascal second for water but whereas for oil it is 9 pascal second which is very much higher than that of water so that is the main reason behind the difficulty in flow for silicon oil compared to water so this is another reason the object moving through if you take an object moving through honey and the object moving through water it is entirely different it is due to the higher viscosity of honey okay now next we will be understanding the variation of viscosity as temperature increases for fluids the variation of temperature with respect to viscosity with respect to temperature will be different for liquid as well as gas the reason behind that one is from the diagram you can see the variation of viscosity for liquid it is as temperature increases the viscosity also 
decreases that is why resistance also decreases but for gas it's not the same here as temperature increases the viscosity also increases so that's why the main reason behind both the case in the first case the influencing parameter for viscosity is the cohesive force cohesive force means the attractive force between adjacent molecule of the same type okay so in the first case the way viscosity in liquid is due to the cohesive force and that varies as temperature decreases now next viscosity variation in gases the variation in liquid such as mu will be equal to a into 10 raised to b divided by t minus c where a b c are constants and t is the temperature so this is a variation of dynamic 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 viscosity with respect to temperature but for gases it is due to the intermolecular collision the collision of molecules increases as temperature increases which leads to increase in viscosity it is defined based on the correlation mu will be equal to a into t raised to half divided by 1 plus b divided by t where a and b are constants and t is the temperature okay next we will be understanding an important constant called as kinematic viscosity which is the ratio between dynamic viscosity and density of the fluid now the si unit of this one is meter square per second and the cgs unit of this one is centimeter per second and the name for that one is strokes now the variation of mu is not that much stronger as there there occurs a change in pressure but when you take the case of mm, the kinematic viscosity the gas varies uh, the value of kinematic viscosity varies with pressure since it is depending on density so next we'll be going through some of the problems from the property dynamic viscosity and kinematic viscosity first question a plate weighing 150 newton and measuring 0.8 meter into 0.8 meter slides down an inclined plane over an oil film of 1.2 mm thickness for a inclination of 30 degree and a velocity of 0.2 meter per second compute the dynamic viscosity of the fluid second question in a stream of glycerin in motion at a certain point the velocity gradient is 0.25 second raised to minus 1 if for the fluid the density is 1268 kg per meter cube and kinematic viscosity is 6.3 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter square per second calculate the shear stress at the point Okay, next we will be understanding different types of fluids that is been available. Now the first type is Newtonian fluid. The Newtonian fluid are fluids which obeys the Newton's law of viscosity. All the type of fluids which obeys Newton's law of viscosity, which we learned in the previous phase, that is, shear stress is equal to mu into du by dy. or in other words we can say the shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear strain is newton's law of viscosity the fluids which obeys this one is called as newtonian fluids so if i am taking a plot between uh, the rate of shear strain and shear stress you will get a plot which is a straight line that is it will be linear in nature and the slope of this one will be the dynamic viscosity so if, if i am taking the dynamic viscosity let this plot be for water if i am taking another fluid and so it, it's obeys the, so the water obeys newton's law of viscosity which is mu is equal to mu divided in du by dy the shear stress is equal to mu into du by dy so if i am taking another fluid another fluid which also obeys newton's law of 
viscosity now in this plot let this be oil so can you just compare between oil and water here you can see in the first case in the case of water you will be having a smaller slope but in the case of oil you are having a bigger slope that means the dynamic viscosity is higher for oil now the fluid which obeys newton's law of viscosity is called as neutron in fluid the most common fluids are water air gasoline oils etc are some of the examples of newtonian fluid now here the viscosity is independent of rate of shear strain for newtonian fluid but all fluids are not newtonian in nature all fluids may not be obeying newton's law of viscosity there are some exceptions but in this course in this course we are studying in detail only the newtonian fluids but we will just go through what are the different options other than newtonian fluid what are the other classification of fluid that is been available to you okay such fluids which does not have a newton's law of viscosity is called as non newtonian fluid that means if you are taking a shear stress to shear uh, rate of shear strain graph for newtonian fluid it will be linear in nature which we have learned in the previous ways now we will go through different cases of a non newtonian fluid if it is first case if it is an ideal fluid if it is an ideal fluid then the viscosity will be equal to zero okay with that means with small shear stress the deformation rate will be very it will be infinity okay now we will take another option if you take a plot like this the shear stress to rate of shear strain plot if it is like this from here you can see if at the bottom part the slope is higher as it moves as the rate of deformation varies the slope will be smaller in nature that is the viscosity will be initial phase viscosity will be higher as the rate of deformation increases the rate of shear strain increases the viscosity decreases so arbitrarily if i am taking a location and finding the slope it can be defined as the apparent viscosity such fluids are called as shear thinning fluids or pseudo plastic some of the example if i am taking pseudo plastic pseudo plastic when you give large shear stress on the corresponding body it will be comparing the if the wave the shear rate is high then viscosity becomes smaller some of the examples are paint polymer etc paint if you see one of the example uh, those who have seen paint after a long period of time it will be hard and much more the viscosity the flow ability of that one will be the resistance to flow will be much more higher as we go so before painting people will be just shaking it at a higher shear rate so that the viscosity gets reduced when he, when he, when he reduces when he, he increases the shear rate the viscosity also decreases so it will be easy to flow another option is the case where in the first case in the initial phase you can see the viscosity was higher viscosity was lower as the shear rate increases it will be increasing the viscosity the slope will be increased so such fluids are called as shear thickening fluids or dilatant fluids yeah shear stress larger apparent viscosity will be obtained that means it becomes much more viscous as the shearing rate increases it becomes harder and harder example is suspended starch sand etc some of the examples okay the application of this one is been utilized in many another case of non newtonian fluid is the viscosity variation the there there will not be any deformation until or unless the shear stress is reached to a permissible limit after that it will be acting similar to newtonian fluid such fluids are called as bingham plastics so the resist it, it, this type of bingham plastics actually resist the shear stress up to a finite value then deforms continuously so just go through this this is very important for your 
university exam as well as those who are applying for gate this topic is very important examples of bingham plastic is toothpaste now the variation if i am taking instead of newton new, newton's law of viscosity if i am modifying the newton's law of viscosity if i am taking the equation it will be equal to shear stress will be equal to a plus b into du by dy raised to n where a and b are constants and n is an exponential constant which has been used to define whether it is shear th thickening or shear thinning fluid so it's it is general equation used for non newtonian fluids so if i am taking bingham plastic the value of a will be equal to the finite value beyond which it has to be applied for the deformation of the fluid and mu will be acting as the b in all the case mu will be acting as b and here the value of n will be equal to 1 and the second case the value of a will be equal to 0 that is for shear thickening fluid the value of a will be equal to 0 and value of b will be equal to mu b will be equal to mu and value of n will be always greater than 1 the value of n will be always greater than 1 and in the second case mu will be equal to b into du by dy raised to n where the value of n will be always less than 1 and value of a according to the general equation the value of a will be equal to 0 in this case also 